If you're into optimizing your workflow, you probably begin each project with your very own starter file. And in that file, you probably have a page of documentation, beautifully presented, with an array of text and color styles. But it never sees the light of day, because when you get a new client, start a new project, the first thing you do is change all those local styles. And after you've updated a dozen fonts and all those colors, you now have to go through your documentation and update each text layer to the new properties, copying and pasting and no doubt missing things along the way. And that's if someone has budgeted the hours for you to do this kind of work in the first place. And that's why I created Automatic Style Guides. It's a little Figma plugin that ensures your style guides are never out of step with your Figma files' local styles. And I wanted to give a little tutorial showing how it might be able to help your workflow too. So obviously the first thing you want to do is install the plugin. So you can do that by searching Automatic Style Guides. Right, so uh, obviously there'll be no community files with automatic style guides. You want this plugins tab up the top here, and there it is, automatic style guides. And you just wanna click this install button off to the side here. And um, that's the plugin installed. So there's a couple of features that it has. Firstly, it has a generate style guide command, which will generate a booklet um, of all your local text and color styles, or you can create your own style guide um, by creating some text layers, naming those text layers with a mustache tag, which links the value of that text layer to your style guide. But uh, without further ado, let's show how it works. So uh, I'm opening up a new design file here. And the first thing we obviously have to do is create some styles. It's a blank document. We don't have any text or color styles. So I'm going to paste these layers in here, which is from an older video. If you want to set that up, um, you can go see that video in the description but I'm just gonna quickly register these styles. So we've got our header one here. So uh, text style, I'm just gonna hit the plus there and uh, call it header one. Uh, we've got our header two here. So I'm just hitting plus header two. I'll try and make this quick, header three, header four. And clicking the plus again. And then we've got a large paragraph here. Paragraph large. We've got our normal size paragraph. Paragraph. And then we've got our button. Now the plugin will generate the styles based on the order of here. So it's, if you've got a bit of a naming scheme, it's gonna make sense to try and keep that one, two, three, four, five in, in order like so. Now I'm just gonna quickly generate the color styles. This might be our brand color. Neutral. Got maybe neutral muted. Neutral shade. And then we might have surface muted. And I'll just call this surface. Wonderful. So now that we've got all our textiles in place and all our color styles in place, all we have to do is run our generate plugins command. And so how I like to do that is actually use search. So if I go command forward slash, it's gonna bring up the search bar and I'm just gonna search for generate style guide. And we've got this one here, automatic style guides generate style guide. And we click that and you can see that new toast notification down the bottom here that lets us know that a page has been created. So I'm just gonna open up the pages panel here and you can see this style guide page. And voila, there is our style guide. You can see that this actually brings in the page name too. Um, so if we were to undo all that and then call this local gym and then run the plugin again, we've even got that page, that document name in there. It's a pretty straightforward document, obviously. We've got the color styles there and we've got the colors and it's got the name of the colors. It's got the RGBA code and the hex code in there. Um, easy to reference for any developers or any brand managers. And uh, we've got the typography styles. Again, just generating in the order that the text styles are here on the side. Uh, we've got the header two, um, we've got the header three, header four, header five, and those paragraph textiles. Now uh, we get a little preview to the right and all the font properties, whether it's bold, so the font family, the size and line height, obviously, the letter spacing. It's got the text decoration style. We've got the case 
in here and any paragraph spacing if we've popped that in. Um, so it's a good suite of properties here um, that you can pass to a developer, that you can pass to a brand manager. If they're using a WYSIWYG editor or Markdown, they know what headers align to what style. So it's a handy little document. And as a bonus, if we go Command A and I'll Command click these arrows here to collapse all that up, you can see how it's just highlighted all the pages there. And then if we go up the top here and go File, Export Frames to PDF, it's got the document name in there. We can actually just save a PDF of this. So if I go open that document up, you can see that the, we've got a style guide document here that we can present to a client or to a developer, and it's pretty easy to follow. But that's not all. We can also create our own style guide and um, keep that in sync. For instance, if I go to these colors here, maybe I want each of these colors. Maybe I want um, a circle treatment instead of a square treatment. And um, let's um, update. Maybe we've got a bit of a green brand that we're working with. And then if I run that update mustache tags command, you can see how it's updated the hex code and the RGBA code. Um, for that color. So you can obviously go ahead and update all these pages and update all these textiles, and it's all gonna stay in sync because um, we're not adding or removing any of the textiles in here. But that being said, if we did wanna rename header one to H1, for example, um, we can go in here, go H1. Now this is out of sync. If I command click on this layer, you can see how this is linking to header one style dot name. So we would actually need to highlight all these layers, go command R and we're looking for header one and we're gonna replace that with H1. So now if I update H1, uh, maybe we bump it up to 72, line height of 90, you can see the previews updating fine. It's linked to that text style. Um, but none of the properties here obviously are updating. But if we run update mustache tags, it's updated the name there, the size and the line height. So you can keep everything in sync. And this is normally the problem that we would have. We've got a document here full of styles. And um, if I go and update those styles with something like batch styler, go and select on all these styles, change it from Barlow to Poppins, update all those styles. Now that um, it's, it's updated all these header styles, you can see that font family has all been updated. And even our previews here are updated because obviously, obviously this text layer is linked to the text style, so it dynamically updates. But what doesn't update is these text layers. Um, they're still got the old attributes. So traditionally you'd have to click on the inspect panel here, um, you know, copy and paste across the font, click on this guy. Whoop paste it in, back to the layer, get the weight, copy the weight, paste it in, get the size, paste it in. And um, no doubt you'll miss styles all the way through. But since we've got these layers named um, header1.font family, if we update mustache tags, it's going to update all those text layers for us because what it's doing is it's looking for any layer with this mustache tag um, treatment. It's got the header one. So it's gonna look up that header one um, textile that we've got up here. And then it's gonna look for a value. So um, here we're looking for the font family value inside header one, which is obviously Poppins. And it's going to change the value inside this text layer depending on the text layer's name. So I think that's pretty handy. And a couple of things to keep in mind, spaces are fine within the text document, especially if you end in a space, if you've got a space between um, characters, that's not gonna phase it. But what will not work is if you have a um, text or color style that begins in a space, um, the plugin just won't be able to read that. And another thing to keep in mind is to just double check that you don't have any missing fonts. So if I paste in a layer here that's connected to a font that's not on my machine, I'll get a A and a question mark up here and it'll be a missing font. So obviously if the font's missing, you can't update this text layer. You can't generate a preview for this, for this missing text style. And Figma is pretty clever now. You can't generate a text style from a layer that has a missing font. 
Um, so it shouldn't happen too often, but that's a thing to keep in mind that the plugin might trip up if your textile is connected to a font that is missing on your system. But other than that, um, you shouldn't have too many worries. And that's all there is to get going with automatic style guides. You can now have a base template, modify that template styles for a client, and your documentation will stay up to date with it. Hope you find it useful and happy designing.